You know, as the pastor, I, I have to say that the Bible is right. The love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. All of us are impacted by environmental hazard, but we see over and again how these issues disproportionately impact communities of color. Race, more than anything else, is still the most likely predictor of where a toxic dump will be located. What's driving this is profits over people with devastating and deadly impact on communities of color and, and communities in general. and say to the folks who are very focused on environmental issues that you're absolutely right in your passion and commitment, but you really need to be talking also a little bit more about racial justice, about civil rights. And I often say to my friends in the civil rights community who are focused on racial justice, y'all need to be talking more about the environment. If you're focused on civil rights, what right could be more basic than the ability to breathe clean air and have access to clean water. Communities that are poor and vulnerable receive the brunt, which is why black children are four times more likely to be hospitalized with asthma. And if they have asthma, they're 10 times more likely to die because they are more likely to be located in places where the ozone levels are so high that it literally is a danger to their health and their well being. The people who receive the least amount of financial reward for the environmental hazards that happen are the ones who receive the brunt of the damage. And it is that contradiction that demands that all of us cry out. We saw an interesting example of how we need to be thinking about these issues generationally. COVID-19 is a tragedy in and of itself. I also think it's a teachable moment because especially in the early days of this crisis, we said to young people in their 20s, hey, this virus may not impact you the same way it impacts your grandmothers and your grandfathers, the older generation, but for your own sake, but especially for them, can you make some lifestyle changes? Maybe not go and hang out and bar hop without a mask on. Can you engage in a kind of inconvenience, a lifestyle change with the view that over the long term, you can keep another generation alive? It's interesting that the very generation that will receive the brunt of our inaction and inattention to climate change is now being called upon to make a kind of lifestyle adjustment for another generation. And so I think we ought to take this as an instructive moment. Folks who are 50 and 60 and 
70 and older need to be thinking about our children. I got in this fight years ago. I stay in it because I now have uh, two toddlers at home. All of us want to leave the best legacy that we can leave for our children. We prepare financially for that. We try to put something aside for their education. What's more important to leave than a clean planet with water that you can drink and air you can actually breathe?